Southern governors believe Nigeria's next president come 2023 should be from their region. And Minister of Niger Delta Affairs Godswil Akbabrio urges the National Assembly to pass the Petroleum Industry Bill, PIB, irrespective of the percentage of revenue allocated to all producing communities. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cole. Governors of the southern states have said Nigerian security agencies must inform a state governor before embarking on any operation in the territory. The governors also issued a communique stating that the southern part of the country should produce the next Nigerian president. The communique was issued at the end of the meeting which was held in Lagos. They reaffirmed the forum's commitment to the unity of the country, etc. Well, joining us to discuss this is Ladikbo Johnson, who's a political analyst, and Baba Shola Adebuyu, who is a political analyst, too. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Good evening. Thank Great. you for inviting. All right. So I'm going to start with you, um, Ladikbo. Uh, let's, we're going to pick it one after the other. Um, so the, as opposed to what other governors in the northern part of the country uh, think the governors in the southern region started by affirming the, their commitment to the uh, unity of the country. Uh, they talked about, you know, uh, the pillars of equity, fairness, justice, peace and progress, you know, coexistence amongst its people. Even though a stand that it took some months ago when it first met as, uh, you know, the Southern Governors Forum, they talked about the open outright ban of um, open grazing. Now that was seen as an affront of sorts to the governors in the northern part of the country. So putting it side by side with them talking about their reaffirmation of commitment to the unity of the country, uh, where, how, how do you think, what message do you think they're trying to communicate to the northern forum? By the way, they also had their forum today, the northern governors. Okay. Yes. <laughs> That's good. Well, um, <clears throat> excuse me. It, um, I believe the um, communique yesterday, um, yesterday's communique was... Um, uh, one that's anticipated or learned from the last one and made sure that within the context of where we're at, and that's the um, arrest of Namad Khan, um, Kanu and the Boho saga, um, they wanted to ensure that um, no one would misinterpret anything they came up with, um, with... Um, um, the issue of um, seceding or um, being apart from Nigeria. So they reaffirmed their belief in the unity of the country, but based on equity and fairness, um, because the um, agitations that we've had from various parts of the country did not just drop out of the sky. It's um, ba mainly because their people, that's the people of the South, whether the southeast, south south to a lesser extent, and the southwest are not really happy with the um, federating relationship we have at the moment, and that is why um, I believe it was couched in that manner. I want to. I, I, I just want to push you on this. When you say that um, they they are trying to make sure that they um, reaffirm that there is no there's no support for this, you know. Um, ethnic tensions that we're facing. Do you not think that the government also have a role to play in these agitations that have been happening? Take, for example, Kaduna State. Take, for example, again, certain other parts of the country where governors seem to maybe be fueling some of those cracks. I don't know. I'm just saying, could well, governors not be playing a role in it? Because it's very easy to point fingers at the presidency. Exactly. Um, but but it's happening in your backyard. Exactly. Every, the governors are playing a role, even down to the local governments. Once you have bad governance, it's contributed in one way or the other to the frustrations being felt by the average Nigerian. And these things have led to um, an overswell of emotions and then you have a lot of people now um, saying, oh, well, 
were better off alone. And when you ask them, okay, what form of government? They don't even know. They just believe that they're better off alone. But I, I, I feel that, um, you know, back to your question, um, uh, all arms of government, well, not all arms, of, but all tiers of government, especially the executive and the legislature, have a role to play and have um, played a role in um, making us um, not so happy, as it were. Yeah, um, Baba Shala, I, I, I talked about this yesterday when we were talking about voter education uh, with my guests yesterday. The average Nigerian, when things go bad, whether it's Lagos State and people are robbing us in traffic, we quickly say, Buhari's government. This country <laughs> is bad because of Buhari. And I'm not holding brief for President Buhari, but how many people make sure that their governors or their local administrators see to the issues or the problems that they're facing instead of pointing the fingers at the presidency. We know that there's a lot of bulk passing, but does this not boil down to the fact that we're not, um, we're ill-equipped with information as to who really governs us and where we should be channeling our problems to? Well, um, for me, I think uh, for those that actually accuse the government, they have a reason. Because Nigeria, as it is, we are part of the unitary system. And uh, the president has the, uh, the full power to determine how the security of this country should be run. Unfortunately, the state governors, who are called the, uh, the chief uh, security officers of the states, have limited power. Although they, although they have what we call the security vote, which most of us don't even know what they do with the security vote. But however, the question is, what power does the governor have over the commissioner of police? I'm very sure the that's, commissioner that, of police... That, that, that's a place that we don't want to go tonight because it, it's, a, it's a whole kettle of fish on its own. When you talk about the governor being uh, the chief security name or in pay, on paper only, and the fact that these ch security chiefs have to uh, wait for order from above, that's a di totally different conversation. But anyway, you were making yes. a point. Yeah, um, I, I, on, on that, you know, what the states are doing, most especially those of us from the state, the northern, the northern part, they already have their own state police who are monitoring everything. They are called Ishba. All these uh, Sharia police, uh, doing all those things. They mm. actually act as policemen in the northern state. So my question is, why is it difficult for the southerners to have their own security uh, apparatus in the state? Yes, they come up, some of them came up with what we call the Amotekun. How many states actually have such a replication of Amotekun in their state? How many, what is the capacity of Amotekun in each state? Even in Southern, I think they call it TSN or so. I can't remember the name of the... Ebubeagu, e e actually. The one that is official is Ebubeagu. Uh, ESN is an offshoot of IPOB. So if, if, if we have enough hands in security... Actually, it is the responsibility of the state governor to ensure full security in the state, to ensure the protection of the people, of everyone living in the state. Looking at what is happening, we have in, in Lagos State, let me just Lagos State at case uh, study. In Lagos State, we have what we call the Lagos State Neighbor Safety Corps or whatever, who are put in strategic places. Once they see anything that is going abnormal, it is their responsibility to contact the security unit in the state. How many, how many places are the security officers? How many of them do we actually have in state? It, I'm very sure we do not have enough of them because the financial, the required funds for such are not enough. So the states are just, they are just managing what they have or trying to create a, 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 a employment for some people for a period of time. But the state needs to do a lot of things. And I think it's high time the National Assembly needs to look at the state police and ensure the state police is stated in the Constitution. For me, I'm not talking for now, it's yet to be passed at the, at the National Assembly. Mm. Uh, let, me, uh, let, let, let me just quickly bring in the issue uh, that the governor's raised in terms of, I mean, I'm sure that this is stemming from um, the DSS's um, raid of um, Sunday Boho's house over the weekend. Now, the governors are saying that security agencies have to, must 
in fact, inform them before they carry out any raid whatsoever or any arrest in their states. Um, and a lot of people are saying that this is not supposed to be. I was listening to the radio today, and, and I think a police officer said that before any police officer from outside the state comes in to carry out any form of arrest or you know um, raid, they have to inform the police in that particular state. Uh, so, but if the governor is a chief security of a state, should that also not be? Um, but but how many people? How many arrests can you really? Uh, accord the governor or give him notice on uh, that I'm curious um, to know because if we for example for every time the police wants to arrest someone in the state I'm wondering how uh, you know how many letters the governor's office will have but I I'm sure you want to weigh in here yeah and uh, 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 on that for me the southern governors actually stated the fact but the truth is Constitutionally, it is not. So if they require such a thing, they need to take a move. The commissioner of police in the state reports to the IG. So if the IG is in charge of all the Nigerian police in, the, in all the states across the nation, they can move to any state at any time. It is the responsibility of the, of the people coming into a particular locality to contact the, the police division in that area, they will get informed that they are coming to this state to the particular area for raid or for arrest at a particular time. Why? Because we don't want a situation of they don't want a situation whereby there will be a counter attack. You know, if there is no information ahead from the from the headquarters to the divisional police post, then there will be a counter attack between the two of them. So the, for me. The state governors actually wanted something that what happened in what happened in uh, what's it called in Padron will not repeat itself. Mm -hmm. But they mm -hmm. have to take a step by contacting the representatives who are in the National Assembly to pass a bill to pass a bill in the National Assembly whereby the state governors must be empowered okay. to have must be empowered to have security information about their state and also. To, 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 to be carried along in respect of what is happening in the United States. Great. You're a lawyer. So let's talk about what the Constitution says yeah. in regards to this, because he said it's not constitutional for governors to be reported to every time there wants to be a read, whether it's from the DSS, whether it's from, um, you know, the police. But what does the Constitution say in this regard? What the governors are asking for, is it constitutional? Or is it something that they need to liaise with the, the members uh, in the National Assembly? Well, the, the, the fact is that the matter hasn't been tested yet. You haven't had governors who taken it up um, officially. The Constitution is quite clear when it says that the governor is the chief security officer of the state. <clears throat> now, the police operate under the inspector general, and it is the precedent that appoints them, you understand, They're the inspector general through okay. the president or what have you. And um, then they report to the state governor, say the commission of police reports to the state governor. But the, in practical sense, in the practical sense of it all, um, the, the governor will not say do this. If he feels, if the commission of police feels that um, <laughs> it is not something uh, expedient or political, um, then that commissioner, he or she, would most likely contact the um, inspector general. And therein you have your problem. So is that the operational side of it? Is it in conflict with what the Constitution, what the Constitution says, says about the um, governor being the chief security officer? Mm. Um, of course, the legal argument is simple. If it is, the Constitution supersedes it. Hmm. You, you, you understand me? Mm. The Constitution supersedes. But as I say, it hasn't been tested. And um, practically speaking, um, as was said earlier, we operate virtually a unitary system of government. We do not appreciate our democracy. We are still fooling ourselves. And you find that um, at the end of the day, the governors are like toothless bulldogs. 
But of course, um, in this communique, the governors were also emphasizing on state police, which he spoke about. Um, they they um, talked about you know funds that um, are deducted from the federation accounts yeah. for the Nigeria Police Security Trust Fund need to be distributed among states and the um, federal government to yeah. combat security. But then it brings into question the what we call the security votes. Yeah. I mean, you're asking for more money when you can't even account for security votes. This is a this is, is a federal is the federal government accounting for its own security. No, but but, but of course they're all parts they're you all see, party to this conversation. If exactly. we must have this conversation. You see, if we must have the conversation, you must look at it and say, look, <clears throat> what is going to the federal? Why is this going to the federal? You understand? Why would you say petro, um, the petroleum industry bill? Why are you saying that this amount should go, or let me jump again, the value-added tax, the, the example I always use, value-added tax from Lagos, from the breweries. Why would it go to a state like Kano that is busy breaking bottles, raiding people, selling alcohol? They say they don't believe in the sale of alcohol. Why should they benefit from the taxes from alcohol in, in, in the southern part of the country? So if we want to have the conversation, and that is what the governors are trying to have, but they are still, their, their hands are still in gloves. They are not hitting out and they're not saying it as it is, either because of party affiliation or one thing or the other. The bottom line is that that is why People are calling for the state police, for true federalism, whatever name, restructuring, whatever name you want to call it. People are saying that we have to either renegotiate our federating relationship. That's it. A lot of us still believe in the entity called Nigeria because we believe that numbers are strength and we will all benefit. From, from, the, uh, from the numbers, if we operate it properly. But it is obvious, the past few years have shown us that things are not operating properly. Yet people do not want to talk about it. Um, and when we say people, we mean all of us. But then yeah. it has to be people who actually know what is in the Constitution. And I keep saying, we, 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 ba we bandy words like, oh, we are... Um, illiterate, uh, well, well, you know, we say stuff like that. But how many people really understand what the Constitution is? Like I said yesterday, the average person is concerned about how he's going to get food on his table. He's not worried about what's in the Constitution. But then we have the NBA, we have civil society, we have activists. Yeah. Um, what are these people doing to put pressure? Because, for example, the NBA knows exactly what's in the Constitution. Um, I do not understand if we do really have a form of um, lobbying in Nigeria. Who are you lobbying to push bills like this, to push conversations like this on the National Assembly? Because we wait until situations like this come up, then we now say, oh, we have to have this conversation. Who's been pushing for these conversations to be had? I keep saying, when people say they, they're calling for a sovereign national conference, I keep saying we have a sovereign conference going on every four years. Once you, the National Assembly is sovereign, you voted for them, keep them on their toes. Mm. Give them your demands. If they do not act, then uh, you remove the person. Now, people will go on to say, oh, that's being naive. Can you do anything during elections? They'll rig it. They'll do this. They'll do that. But it has to start somewhere. And people have to get involved. We, the people, have to get involved. We have to make sure that we set the agenda. For instance, the elections are coming now. Now you'd be amazed that, the, that those who know will probably not get involved. That's what normally happens. The percentage of people that registered voters that came out last time was about 25% or less. They do not get involved. Those who do not know and who choose to collect the rice and the Ankara and the palm oil and the Naira are those who will go and vote. And they don't give a damn about um, what the Constitution says or what, what, what should happen. It's unfortunate. But talking about the Constitution, uh, let me come to you, Baba Shala. You know that yesterday, everybody, people were on social media, with hashtags pushing uh, for members of the um, Nigerians to start calling their representatives and their senators uh, as to the exclusion of certain important aspects 
of the Electoral Act bill that is about to be, you know, um, pushed for consent to Mr. President. Um, the fact that, uh, you know, the electro electronic transmission of the election results uh, from the Electoral Act has been removed, um, this has also enraged the government, uh, the governors. The governors also uh, included this in their communique. In fact, I'd like to uh, read exactly what uh, the communique said. It said, in order to consolidate our democracy and strengthen the electoral process, the Southern Governors Forum rejects the removal of the electronic transmission of election results from the Electoral Act and also rejects the confirmation of exclusive jurisdiction in pre-election matters on the Federal High Court. I'd like to hear your thoughts. You see, I think this government, this government is not actually taking up how to progress. We are going backward in everything. Why should a group of people think that the best thing they can do for, for from the Electoral Act is to remove the electronic uh, voting? I, I really don't understand. Does that really mean that you are fine with the manner things we are doing? The electronic transmission is, as far as we are concerned, and most people, I believe, are on my side, we are, the, it is the best way to do it. And, you know, when, when you do manual transmission, a lot of things can happen. I participated in the last election, and I know what happened. In, the part, in, in two words that I contested, uh, in, in, in the state, in particular two words, the total votes I gathered from that particular one is what was declared as the total vote for a state. You know, it means that we are not ready for the truth. We, are only, we have only gathered a, a, a group of people who are in the National Assembly to make money, to, to, to be able to collect money, get connection, contract, and uh, maybe feed their people and so that they can continue to be in power. Because I really don't, I really don't get it. Manual transmission, anything can happen. The, the tout who's the hired uh, whatsoever can get to the polling unit, scatter the place, or collect the, uh, collect the sheet from them, write whatever they want to write. But when you have the electronic transmission, you input it there, and it goes to the central database. Yes, I'm not saying that doesn't have its own uh, its own disadvantage. Yes, it can be it can be manipulated, but at the same time, with the manipulation, you can really limit the manipulation. So, for me, the National Assembly needs to withdraw that thing and put back the electronic transmission for the High Court. Well, I think we already have the tribunal who is already doing the job of the High Court. So if there is any matter, okay, the tribunal comes in after the election, sorry. The tribunal comes in after the election. So yes. for me, I really don't understand why the Federal High Court issue is removed. The Federal High Court issue is removed. Is it that for whosoever has an electoral election and matter will go to the appeal court or the Supreme Court? Maybe the lawyer can help out on that aspect. Exactly. I, I, saw, I saw him tapping on the table, so I want to find out exactly. Uh, because What the governors are saying is that um, I think the, um, the, the electoral law is saying that um, for pre-election matters, that the federal high court should have exclusive jurisdiction. Okay. Now, that portends two things. One. A lot of the state high courts may be very, very busy, mm -hmm. right? That's on the ordinary up and up side. Mm -hmm. And that's why they want it that way. On the other hand, and forgive me for saying this, people, members of the bar may not like it. It may be that the governors, so that it doesn't seem I'm supporting the governors all, um, all the time, the governors may feel that they may not have so much influence because you see, they do not appoint federal high court judges. They appoint the state high court judges. So they might have some influence on the judges regarding party primaries hmm. in their state. You're beginning well, to a, see. That's an, that's an you're beginning to see to the it. picture. Yeah, that's an so. interesting <laughs> tweet. Uh, twist to it, but 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 then uh, of course these are. 
you know, yeah, fine lines in between. Um, you might argue the other way that um, the federal would have undue influence over the federal high court judges. You might yeah, and argue. the states yeah, might so. have. Unfortunately, we're still at that stage. Look at um, the election in America. The judges, Donald Trump, hurriedly appointed to the Supreme Court, ruled against him. Well, that's because there is some independence uh, exactly. of the judiciary. But in Nigeria, we, we call things, we append independence at the beginning of the names of certain government agencies, but then and we don't really see those. You know. yes. Finally, gentlemen, because we're out of time, quickly, uh, Baushal, I'm just going to give you um, uh, 30 seconds, and I'll give you 30 seconds. Let's quickly comment on the um, PIB. Uh, the governors had uh, um, spoken about the industrial, um, the petroleum industry law. Um, they commended the progress that has been made, but of course they rejected the 3% that was proposed. Um, and support the 5% share of all revenue to the host communities, even though there's still people who are asking for more? Um, for the 5%, uh, personally, I don't have issue with that. 5%, fine. But my own concern is the 30% of the share of profit that will now be diverted to the exploration of oil and gas in the business. In other words, the resources the profit being made from the south-south, you now take it to the north for exploration in Bono, Shokoto, Chad, all those basins, exploring for oil, 30% of the profit. So what happens to those, for, what happens to the oil communities area? So for me, I think they need to do a lot of things about that. If not, that will be issue, most especially from the south-south. Okay. We are taking 30%. The what you are the federation the sharing from the federation account is not enough. Now you want to take additional thirty percent from there to the north and develop the north. I think that it, it's totally wrong. It's unacceptable okay. for me. I am against it. Okay, and Mr. Uh, Ladipo. Well, I align myself with um, what he said. Um, I feel that the five percent, in the context of where we are at at the moment, is too small, too little and it must be more. People must benefit more from their resources in their communities, in their areas. And those are, you see, it is going to be a process um, that is um, either restructuring or whatever. Um, true federalism is a process, and this is part of the process. It won't happen overnight. So I believe that they should have pushed for something more, more than the 5%, okay. you understand. Well, Ladipa Johnson, Baba Shola Degui, public affairs analyst, both, thank you very much for being part of the conversation. I appreciate you. Thanks for having us. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, what is the, the correct percentage for oil revenue or oil producing communities? Do they have more percentage, as my guests have said? Well, we're speaking to um, certain gentlemen on the petroleum industry bill right after this break.